Well, it was the picture right on the first page of seeing, you know, Sharansky. Wait, get off a of clamp <laughs> some of these things, I'm sorry. You know, to see him, because I remember, you know, having marched for him for so many years, and then to see him in the flesh and blood actually arriving in Israel. That article was just very emotional, very exciting, very moving. For anybody who wants to find meaning in Jewish history, for anybody who wants to see how Jewish history has meaning and implications for us today, we need the JTA Historical uh, Archive. To have something like this, where we are, we the Jews, are telling our own story in our own publication, um, is something that is to be treasured. It will be really a, a remarkable uh, a tool, and the best news is it's free. Um, and it's free and available to people all over the world. And it's essential for younger Jews who are very attuned to, you know, hearing uh, and reading opinion about Jews, opinion about Israel, um, opinion in their lives, to have a place where they can find facts. I decided to use the JTA archive as one of the tools for a research paper that I was writing to compare the way the Jewish media and the secular media reported on the ordination of the first female rabbi, Rabbi Sally Presand. The JTA was also the only Jewish news source that actually reported on the ordination as news. I searched on my birthday. I found it really interesting how the Reconstructionist movement approved women becoming rabbis. There was and still is a lot of conventional wisdom that says that Americans didn't know about the Holocaust while it was happening and couldn't have known about the Holocaust that it was while it was happening. One of the values of this archive is that people can go and they can actually look at the bulletins that the JT sent, a sent out during this period and sort of see what information was in fact available. And the JTA was really the only source of information about those massacres early on. They were the first uh, news site to report on what's now commonly called the Babi Yar massacre, where 52,000 Jews were murdered in Kiev. And we visited a memorial town, which is called Khatin. Uh, this town had 163 people men, women, and children who were locked by the Nazis into a barn. The barn was set on fire and they were all, of course, killed. And I asked our guide if, in fact, these had been Jewish people who were killed. Oh, no, 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 they were, they were Russian people. I could not find anything to validate my suspicion that they were, in fact, Jews. I found it this morning in your archive. It opens up a whole world of, of the past to also inform us as we go forward into a, into a good and bright Jewish future. I follow JTA daily. I think it's an important source of information. And for a while it was our really only source of information for international Jewish news don't have a JTA, then, you know, the mainstream best just isn't going to pay attention, even when it should. I'm sure that there are many, many treasures still to be uh, discovered in uh, this uh, archive, and uh, as a historian, I can't wait. Mm -hmm.